Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Spill the Beans right now. Today I'll be taking you through the various job opportunities in pharmaceutical company after completing a pharmacy degree. So it happens that I have completed PharmD uh, back in India, uh, it was from uh, 2014 to 2020. And while I was doing that course and also after that course, I was completely clueless about what are the career opportunities because I had done a uh, internship in, within the hospital and I was not sure, I was completely sure that I didn't want to go to go and work within in a hospital setting. And I wanted to find what are the career opportunities that uh, that we as pharmacists can work in after completing the pharmacy and I did a lot of research I tried talking to people but you know there was a lot of uh, hesitation because uh, uh, usually it was uh, not well accepted course and also I had so much trouble in finding the information so after I have completed my course, I have started working in the pharmaceutical industry. I've also worked with the CRO and now I know the various uh, roles and functions that we can all fit into. So let me take you through a, a few of them. But before that, let me ask you, what does a pharmaceutical company do? So the main goal of the pharmaceutical company is to produce life-saving medicines and also medical treatments for patients uh, uh, and it is one of the most important priority for any pharmaceutical company for that matter. And they conduct clinical research, clinical trials and also develop new drugs and it takes a lot of years for them to take drugs, to make drugs. Uh, so usually it was said that it was around 20 years and because of the few accelerated uh, processes like in such as in COVID, we were able to get medicine in one or two years time but usually this is a very long process and it takes somewhere around 20 years to bring it to the market from the table and also market it sell the drugs and make sure that the healthcare providers and patients understand what is the real use of medicine and the main uh, purpose of for what a pharmaceutical company does is to uh, increase the life expectancy through their treatments and also helps to eradicate and eliminate the diseases because various diseases are uh, used to kill number of people and because of the life-saving medicines that pharmaceutical companies have developed through their research uh, it has brought a lot of uh, in life expectancy as well in as well uh, in low as well as middle income company uh, countries not just in developed countries so there's a lot of development in that area and also reduces the pain and suffering we all know how bad how bad it can get even if we get a common cold so think about um, severe illnesses chronic illnesses um, uh, such as a copd cancer all of those so and even rare diseases like most of the, most of us don't even suffer from that but there are people who suffer from such rare conditions so reducing the pain and suffering and vaccines bringing about vaccines because prevention and treatment is one thing a treatment is one thing but also preventing the uh, preventing the cause is also a very important thing so that's another factor that pharmaceutical companies focuses on and also reducing the hospital stays uh, because as we saw in the COVID-19 until and unless there was a medicine or the vaccine that was available, there was a lot of pressure on the hospitals and the, it was it was uh, unmanageable. So unless there is this input from the pharmaceutical companies that comes in, it is it is very hard, hard to take care of the people and uh, hospitals alone cannot manage it. So these are the things that pharmaceutical company does. So uh, if you if you feel as a person or as a pharmacist, you think that, OK, these are the values that pharmaceutical companies stands for then obviously this is a place to be and you will enjoy working in the pharmaceutical company and uh, knowing more about the medicine as such so i feel like developing a new medicine yeah uh, so um, as a matter of fact developing a new medicine involves lengthy and costly processes within the uh, with the clinical research being the longest and the most expensive stage but it also is a very highly stimulating and gratifying uh, career prospects that anybody can choose so the first one is the clinical research. So the entry level for many people working in the clinical research is the role of clinical trial administrator or a clinical trial research associate. So from being a CRA and handling a single study, you can progress into clinical research executives responsible for multiple studies. And the next is also you can move as a clinical research scientist. And it is it is said that you just need a life science degree for 
starting your career in clinical research so in different countries and different uh, pharmaceutical companies these names differ but they all stand for the same thing so the main responsibility is that someone who is working in this area would typically include input into the designs of the protocol then design and approval of the case report forms and database design for the study so this is a role which is very fascinating and clinical research so i have seen people working as cras and ctas uh, in within the hospital setting itself because that is uh, if the study is in coordination with the pharmaceutical company again there can be um, pharmacists who are based within the hospital but there are um, cras and ctas who are placed within the pharmaceutical company there is one uh, con to this role is that it requires a lot of travel and if you are a person who does not like traveling and you like a desk based job i think the, this is something that you have to reconsider before looking more into this job role now coming to clinical data management so the data managers they are responsible for seeing the information is more consistent and complete and it's of a high quality the data i mean the clinical trial data this is a patient data all of the information that you collect once they inf uh, once the uh, medicine goes into the patient's body how is the reaction how did they react to it what was the body temperature what was the clinical parameters that you need to monitor what how, what happened on day one what happened on day two so all of this data needs to be compiled it's just not for one patient it may be for 1500 patient in on uh, on one site and there would be many multiple sites so many multiple um, drugs and indications so as you can imagine this is a whole lot of data and this describes um, the processing of huge amount of in data and that is generated during the clinical trials like i said and a wide range of community applications as well as database systems support the complete collection and management of the subject and patient data so data managers have to liaise with the clinicians and uh, medical writers regulatory affairs specialists and also quality assurance to make sure that everything is happening well in order so coming to the next one i think everyone would be familiar with this it is the drug safety and pharmacovigilance uh, it is a fact that uh, most of us after a, pharm a pharmacy degree i have seen that everyone has a tend to go towards pharmacovigilance even though uh, in our country uh, i mean i where i come from india uh, there is not much uh, pharmacovigilance that we do on our own but we tend to do um, uh, pharmacovigilance activities for various other countries where the pharmacy companies actually based in so this is the kind of work that we do i started very briefly and it was just one month i did a, a few a row a few activities for uh, pharmacovigilance and then i found out that there were uh, uh, this was the activity and some something that i would not prefer on my own i so i moved on to another section that was a medical affairs so i can i can but i can talk to you in detail about it so the drug safety or pharmacovigilance is are the experts who monitor if there are any un, unexpected side effects of the medicine during the clinical trials and also once the drug is marketed so it is pre uh, pre approval as well as post approval and they collect um, ev and evaluate information from patients healthcare professionals working to identify if there are any new information about the medicine that was not accounted during the trial and also while the patients uh, are actually using in the real world so real world evidence and the drug safety is one of the key factors that pharmaceutical companies have to monitor and they continue to monitor some of the roles that you would find by while you are looking for a job in pharmacovigilance would be drug safety associate then medical information specialist that was a role that i got into so my role said drug safety associate but actually i was doing medical information so it is it is kind of confusing but you should understand okay this is within the pharmacovigilance that these roles sit and also if you progress further you can become pharmacovigilance scientist or quality qppv that is another role so there are various job opportunities i feel like pharma, uh, pharmacovigilance within our country india is booming a lot and also within uk i feel that there are a lot of opportunities if you work within the pharmaceutical pharmacovigilance in india and if you plan to move to any other former foreign country if you were working with their regulatory works it will be very easier for you coming to health economics i feel like this is very very less known so i can talk a bit about it as well so it is health economics they are uh, actually ensuring that the 
trials collect the economic and the quality of life data that can be used to profile the value of medicine but uh, so this this may be a, a very new topic that we will not be able to connect with the problem is that in india we actually go to the pharmacist or to the doctor we say our uh, issues and they write the medicine we just go and directly buy the medicine from the pharmacy we pay by from our pocket but in various other countries such as uk germany france all of this happens in a different way where once the drug is marketed it is approved it has to go through another process that is where they have to prove the efficacy of the drug to the uh, approvers or to the health technology assessment bodies where they will assess if this drug has uh, further or superior benefits than the already available medicine and then based on that this medicine's value will be decided and be reimbursed on that so this is how it works for uh, outside countries and that is where the health economics come into action uh, so what are the various roles that you can find within the health economics is that health economist is another value market access uh, associate outcomes research pricing and reimbursement associate and health technology assessment uh, specialist so these are the roles so what they do actually is that they work closely with the colleagues of uh, sales and marketing they also work with scientists, uh, data managers, clinical research associates, statisticians, making sure that while the clinical trial is going on, there is enough information that is gathered so that we can so that they can develop uh, the enough information to prove that their medicine is effective, has effectiveness. Uh, and uh, based on that, you can decide on the uh, reimbursement strategy. So that is how this works. So the next one is uh, my favorite one, that is the medical affairs. So uh, like I said, I started with the drug safety and then moved to medical affairs because I found I, I actually could connect to it because there was a lot of uh, clinical data that was discussed and I worked as a medical viewer um, so that was with a pharmaceutical consulting company so what does a medical affairs do they are it is a critical function actually within the pharmaceutical industry that involves uh, developing and communicating about the medical as well as the scientific information about the drugs to healthcare professionals regulatory bodies patients and everyone so various roles that are involved in this is the medical science liaison medical writer medical information specialist and medical affairs as manager so msl is a role that helps in building and maintaining the relationship with the key stakeholders key opinion leaders and they they actually talk about scientific as well as medical information about drugs collaborate with the healthcare professionals and what does a medical writer do they are responsible for developing the scientific and medical communication so basically they are involved in writing uh, about the clinical study reports the regulatory submissions and also about the scientific publications and uh, then we have the medical information specialist something that is uh, kind of overlapping with the medical information that we saw for pharmacovigilance if there is any issue about a drug or any concerns or more information that the pharmacist patients uh, healthcare professionals anyone wants to know they would just call the pharmaceutical company and it is the medical information specialist who would answer your queries so that is what they do and then as you progress in career so within the medical affairs you have the next role as medical affairs manager then you have medical affairs directors then country lead and that's how it progresses so so you should understand that this is also a very potential career that you can choose that is a medical affairs i did my degree in medical affairs and i was able to learn a lot Thought about it and then it is my area of work that is regulatory affairs so like you can see i started as a pharmacist then i went into pharmacovigilance then moved into medical affairs learned about medical affairs and now i work in regulatory affairs so this is the beauty of working in pharmaceutical company whatever you are learning whatever you are uh, um, wherever you are starting your career it is always transferable you can move from one uh, area of function to another with all the skills that you develop from one function you can easily transfer it to other because ultimately it is all the clinical trials that you need to know and also all the uh, all the regulatory bodies and what are the requirements and if you know all of that you will understand that okay this is the value that you are bringing to the society as well as for the patients so everything comes into or you get all your ducks in your row and you will be able to save through so coming to the regulatory affairs 
so it is actually a very critical function within the pharmaceutical industry that involves uh, ensuring that the drugs are developed manufactured uh, marketed in compliance with the regulatory requirements so in india you would follow the indian rules in uh, as i'm based in uk we follow the mhra and if your company is based in europe so you would follow ema if your company is based in uh, uh, us you would follow fda so that is the regulations that i'm talking about here so various roles that you can see here is a regulatory clinical and regulatory cmc so i often see that people get confused between regulatory clinical and regulatory CMC so I can share a bit about it so the fact that regulatory clinical is about regulatory requirements related to clinical trial development clinical development of drugs including the conduct of clinical trials and the submission of clinical trials to regulatory bodies so the primary focus is on the safety and efficacy of the drug in humans and it involves that the clinical trials is designed and conducted in compliance with the regulatory requirements so they are brought into the discussion very early on and similarly we have the regulatory CMC. So they are actually referring to related requirements related to the chemistry, manufacturing, control of the drugs. Primary focus on the regulatory CMC is to ensure that the drugs are on the stable all the, over the time. So it involves making sure that the process is well defined, that the drug substances and the drug products meet the established requirements and specifications, etc. And then we have the regulatory operations. So since I said that you are actually interacting with the regulatory bodies, it's just not that you ha have uh, tons of papers and you just go to the regulatory bodies and talk to them. Instead, there are various submission portals through which these applications are submitted. So before the clinical trial starts, we have the clinical trial application. You put that application. And I think in US, it would be new drug application. And once that is done, you have the various stages of uh, um, clinical trials happening. You keep on submitting and adding more details. Data. and once all of this is done you approve you then supply then you apply for the marketing authorization application again this goes through another portal so all of these values all of these uh, applications are then collated consolidated and done correctly by the regulatory operations now coming to my major role that is regulatory policy and intelligence i was actually unaware about the existence of regulatory policy and intelligence it was a completely new role for me it's just that i try to correlate with what i was planning to do as a medical science liaison is just to com communicate what the information we have to the outside world that is the healthcare professionals and patients but instead for regulatory policy and intelligence it's completely the other side where all the information is available on the external environment such as the healthcare bodies health health technology assessment bodies and uh, various other compliances that we have to regulate comply to all of these regulations and guidelines policies ev everything is available on the external world you try to find those information process the information make it more simpler because all of this information would be very complex and hard to understand and this has to be curated and then supplied to your pharmaceutical perspective uh, colleagues and teams so that they can use in their strategy. So that is how regulatory policy and intelligence works. So this brings me to uh, end, end of uh, what all roles that I wanted to share for this presentation. But as you can see, there are so many opportunities within the pharmaceutical company and this does not limit to all of these roles that I mentioned. So obviously it needs to be done in another part. So meanwhile, so what can you do now is to conduct your thorough research about the role that you were interested in and gather more comprehensive knowledge about it and also connect with the professionals whom you can find on the LinkedIn or any other uh, areas correct uh, who are currently working in the industry or in specifically in the area that you liked from my description and inquire about the daily tasks what they like and dislike about the job and also the path that they follow to reach where they are today so that is very important and also develop all the skills that you need to strengthen your profile so that it makes you a competitive candidate when they start hiring within the pharmaceutical company and also tailor your resume that is the most important thing and make it make sure that it matches all the job requirements uh, and also highlight their relevant experiences and skills so that's all for today thank you so much for listening with me. i'll be taking another episode to give a brief description about any of the roles that you are interested in such as compare between medical affairs and regulatory affairs so if you are interested in listening to that please stay tuned and also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel thank you